Welcome to the 138th ever episode of the Dex Podcast. I'm Alex. And I'm Pokekills. Boy, look at us. Mm. We are back, finally, after a week's absence because we were in Norway. Ah! We were in Sandefjord, Norway. Isn't that crazy? It was so pretty. Anyway, before we get into that, welcome. This is a podcast about Pokemon. We are the Dex, a show on YouTube where there is trivia and there is strategy and there is, you know, we do a bunch of other stuff. Yeah. But we're here. This is our weekly podcast. There's going to be Pokemon news. There's going to be Pokemon. I was trying to think of something that rhymes with news, but I, I, I came up with nothing. Views. Views. Pokemon views. Our views on all things Pokemon. No, uh, but we're here. We're back after a week. And uh, hey. 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 How was your Pokemon week? Uh, all right. (laughs) (laughs) My computer beeped. (laughs) Okay. Uh, How was your Pokemon week? My Pokemon week was great. Um, we, uh, there was a- Are we going to like jump into it right now? What? Like the Norway stuff? Yeah. Yeah. Is this, is this our Pokemon week? I feel like yes, because it had a lot to do with Pokemon, you know? Yeah. You know what? Yeah. Let's break, let's break the, let's break the format up. Okay. So, um, the cool, cool bits- First of all, I mean, Pokemon related bits was that there was a uh, Pokemon Go event going on while we were in Norway. That was yeah. like uh, the Explorers event. Yep. Um, more common rock type Pokemon. And then like, uh, you know, your buddy Pokemon would get uh, candy faster. Uh-huh. Um, and so my, my Dratini is almost ready to evolve all the way up into a Dragonite. And it'll be the first one that I've gotten. So I'm really excited. Oh, it's like a really high percentile one too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's it at? 96 percentile. 96? Yeah. That's amazing. So I'm pretty excited about that, that. That Dragonite would get into Harvard. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. How many candies do you have now? Uh, 114. And you need 125? Yeah. Ooh. Getting there. Ooh. Getting close. All right. Um, but yeah, like the whole, the whole thing about this week in general, in, in, in case you missed it somehow, is that we went to Norway as, as guests of Retro Spilmessen, which mm-hmm. is a Norwegian... Uh, like retro gaming expo. It's like a very like not, it's not, you know, they're, they're very common in America, not super common in Norway. This one was pretty big. They were talking something like 5,500, 6,000 attendees, something crazy like that. And uh, we were the, the guests. It was just like one that we would go to here, except it just happened to be in Norway. And in, I think in order to sort of like sweeten the deal a little bit to make it a little bit more worth our time to say yes to, you know, they offered like sort of like, a few extra days in Norway because it was the national day when they got their independence from Sweden, I believe. Hopefully that's accurate. I think it is. Yes. Right. And uh, so we celebrated that holiday. They like cooked us like good Norwegian food. We like saw some Norwegian sites and it was really cool. And we got to hang out with a bunch of our friends that we don't see that often. And we also made friends with David Doak and David Wise yeah. from Rare back in the 90s, which was crazy. Um. But it was a good ass time. I had a, I had a fun time. It was gorgeous. Yeah, I, I I love Norway. It was so much fun. Um, we uh, the town that we were in, uh, Sandefjord, was so um, it was so quaint. It was, it was very, very, it was very quiet. quiet. It was trippy though because you know we're from Los Angeles. The sun goes down seven thirty p.m. for us, which is you know normal for us. Like it never fluctuates by more than an hour or so. Yeah, and that is mostly just because of daylight savings time. But like. The sun does not go down till maybe like 10.35 p.m. And so your body's like, hey, I got five more hours now that the sun's down where I'm like up and about and then I go to bed. But if I do that, it ends up like 3 to 3.30 in the morning, right? And I'm like still up because I think it's like midnight, which is like already crazy, right? (laughs) Yeah. Plus I'm nine hours ahead. So like I'm usually like very tired, but also my body's just like, dude, what time is it? Like nothing makes sense. Jet lag is wild, man. Dude, jet lag plus the plus the daylight, and then the crazy thing is, by four in the morning, the sun is just back up again. Right. Yeah. You're so far north that, like, you know, and then it's opposite in the in the winter time, but in the spring and summertime, it's just like the sun's up the, the whole time. Yeah. So that was like <laughs> that was the one thing that was just like really rough about this. But I I'm I don't want to misrepresent it. This was like an amazing visit to like an amazing place. It was it was so cool. Yeah. Uh, man, like what 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 did we do? 
Uh, well, we went, uh, well, we, we celebrated the 17th of May, which it was the, you know, like you just said, was yeah. their national day, which there's parades, there was, uh, like street fairs, et cetera. Yeah, they have like all the kids in the schools in the town, like come do a parade in the morning and everybody's there and they all dress in like suits and stuff. And the graduates have to wear this like jumpsuit for a week or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's part of their tradition that like the last couple of days of school, they all have to wear these uh, jumpsuits and they're not allowed to take them off or take showers or anything like that. So you got these like stinky high school kids that are like partying because they graduated. And also the but, whole town is just like these freaking teens. Look at these teens. But they're they're having a great time. Yeah. And everybody's like, yep, they're having a great time. Yeah, it's like very funny. And then uh, so we did that. And then we had like, you know, we had like wieners. We had like like soda, ice cream. We tried salt licorice, which Ooh, was a crazy Norwegian that was salty, thing. Salty. Man. I kind of like got down on it. Can I? S I mean, like, if anyone would, it would be you. What does that mean? Well, I mean, because you're always like the one that's like, you know what? I liked it. Ew. Like, of course. Ew. Of course you are. What do you I mean? liked it. You did. That you said that. But what if I just liked it? Well, no, it's impossible for anyone to like oh that. Oh my god, that was see, gross. That's so gross. You just gotta meet it where it's on halfway. You gotta be like, all right, uh -huh. like, what's this about? Sure. What? <laughs> it was gross. All right. All right. All right. Uh, so that was the first day. It was really fun. We had, um, I'm not going to pronounce the name of it. It was like a tradition Norwegian. I always say it and it sounds very dirty whenever I say it. So you it's can, called, it's called the Is that right? Shetekake. Shetekake. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm going to, you know what? That's, that's this it. This is not an explicit podcast. No. That's just the name of the food. Yeah, that's right. Explicit. I don't think so. No explicit. Uh, Hashtag no splitsit. <laughs> Wallace is sleepy. Wallace is shaven. It's so funny. Anyway, anyway, what was I talking about? Oh, yeah, this stuff. It was like Norwegian meatballs, traditional with gravy and potatoes and mashed peas and lingonberry sauce. And mm. it was damn good. So good. Yeah. So that was the first day. And then the second day we went to the factory of Complet. Yeah. Uh, which is a company that is sort of like a like e-commerce retailer in norway that that's like a big one for like just the whole scandinavian region and it was huge it was like a huge warehouse and there was like boxes everywhere because one of the con organizers worked there so he was just like come on a tour and we're like yeah and they had this like giant robotic system built it was so crazy where like it goes it's like a it's like 15 meters tall and it's like i forget how how big but like pretty big like huge. half a football field in size and they have all these crates and they like have these automated robots at the top that like go around on the stacks and like grab stuff out and like move stuff around so that they can get to stuff that's lower, yada, yada, yada. And it's all just robots and you can like watch them on this big screen. It was crazy. It was so cool. Yeah, it was like insane. And they had like all these little like zip packing plants and they were showing how they make all the computers and how like humans like build the computers and like quality test them. Uh, it was crazy. It's so interesting to see like an automated factory like that because it was just like the, uh, if you've ever seen how it's made. Yeah, uh, that TV it, was, show. it just felt like, like I was it in just it. like was there. We were just like there watching it and we were like, oh, it's cool. funny. Yeah, it's funny because that's probably just like how every factory is. And like know, probably a bunch of people who listen to this, like work in factories and are just like tourists. <laughs> but like it was it was uh, it was really neat. I had like a really cool time, like checking out a factory, like a warehouse. It was like really neat. Yeah. Um, And then on that same day, we went out to a really nice Norwegian restaurant. We had some really good food. And then that was cool. And we were hanging out each night and it was like tripping us out because we'd like stay out till three in the morning and go to weird restaurants that were open in the middle of the night. Like because it just didn't seem like it was nighttime. It just didn't seem it was. Yeah, <laughs> I, I can't like we were like walking the streets, going to gas stations, getting like sodas in, at like 1030 p.m. Like that's so weird. I would never do that <laughs> just to go get a soda in L.A. or something. Especially at 10.30 p.m. It's just like a weird thing to do, but we were just doing it because it was like, well, it's daytime, the streets are empty, and there's no fear of anything going wrong. It's like, light outside. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, that was the second day. What happened on the third day? That's We also, oh, on the second day, we also interviewed like with some newspaper with a guy who had no idea what YouTube was or what Pokemon. <laughs> I mean, he knew what Pokemon was, but he didn't know what the Dex was or what how that would be a thing. It was really interesting. Uh, and then... Uh, what was the next day? That was the day when we went to the, the, sculpture, the park. sculpture garden. Yeah, that was so cool. Yeah, yeah. There's this um in uh there it was like a mile away from our hotel. We like walked up there. We uh it was it was let me tell you, it was like a, the most beautiful forest it that I've ever so, seen. It was so it was so like moist. I don't know how to like describe <laughs> that better. 
It was spring. I mean, it's springtime. Yeah. So all the leaves are new and like very, very light green. And the soil and, was very and like bright black. And, yeah. Yeah. And it was just like the colors were beautiful. The flowers were like bursting into bloom. And we just like walked up this path to this uh, sculpture park. And there's this um, there's this like structure, this like white structure that's like a very modern looking building. And then inside are these uh, marble sculptures. Pretty and, like futuristic, like alien, like almost like surreal looking sculptures. Yeah. yeah which was really, really cool. cool. Like really refreshing to see and like. A public park like you never see that yeah, yeah yeah so they were those were super super neat and then around uh, the park as well there was also this uh, manor house that had been bequeathed to the city um when the owner of it uh, had passed away so and beautiful. Uh, it was it was beautiful there was lots of um there was like art and tapestries like all over the walls wood like, just like insane. wood painted on the ceiling and stuff like intricate design it was it was beautiful and uh, yeah, they turned it into a cafe after so that people could come in and like look around and then you know like have a coffee or a tea and the gardens around the the manor were like very very pretty as well. Yeah, um, it was we were just like having a coffee with freaking David Wise and David Doak and like Norm and his wife and all these people Gerard, you know, mm -hmm. and we're just hanging out, and then like we're in like a, I like you could see like down to the fjord, and it was like there were children like playing, and we were just talking about like video games. Yeah, it was tight. It was really cool. Um. That was a great day. We like walked down to the the, the fish market and had like, uh, like we the, we saw these like fresh fi fish that had just been caught like in the harbor and well not in the harbor but like brought in like just maybe twenty yards away like, like right on off boats. the boat yeah and uh, everything was so good and we had like food. Kelly even ate like a bunch of shrimp, which is like is very rare for me. Yeah, I'm she's very not a big she's, about she's, she's she's not a big fish fish eater. Uh, but it was so good and then. What else did we do that that day? That was pretty much it. That took a, took a big chunk of the day up. Yeah, we it? were pretty bushed. I did we go get milkshakes that same day? Yeah, that was milkshake day. The guy was like, "I have the best milkshake in town." I swear to God, <laughs> that was so interesting. Did. Yeah, he did. I mean, there was like very few milkshakes in town, but you know, his was the best. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Good on you, dude. Uh, what else? Then the next day was the convention, and that was two days, and that was just crazy, crazy convention stuff. Yeah, nonstop. It was just weird because I didn't realize that there would be that many people in Norway who were like, I love the decks. Yeah, yeah, that was really awesome. That was really yeah, exciting. Yeah, it was really people cool came to up see. to us, like, knew the show, knew what we were about. Yeah. Like, so, so if you guys are listening who came and saw us, like, thank you so much. That's really yeah. cool. Uh, it was a big it was a big convention. There was a lot going on. The staff was, like, remarkably nice. Uh, David Wise, like, shredded on his sax with, like, some local, like, video game cover band that was really cool. Uh... We met a lot of people. We got a lot. Of, we had Kelly. Kelly put out like a like draw draw a Pokemon paper. Yeah. So we got some pretty good ones. Shout outs to the Mewtwo. Oh yes. yes Very definitely. funny stuff. <laughs> um. That was the con. The con was awesome. It was very exhausting. Like, we were really not getting a lot of sleep most of the time because of the lights and the right right and the right. time and and it's definitely something you have to get used to, but you don't get used to it in a week. So. Yeah, yeah, it was really fun. We played Brantel Floss's uh, party game at a panel. That was really funny. Yeah, Use yeah. your words. Check that game out. I had a fun time with it. Alex won, but I got the most trophies. Yep. So. I wasn't. You be the judge. I wasn't gonna mention that. I was just gonna. I was gonna mention that. Classily, you know, pretend like we all were equal winners because we all had fun. You know, isn't that the? Oh, most I mean, I just got three trophies, and you just won one game. Uh huh. All right. <laughs> well. Uh, huh. Um, so that was the con. That was a good time. Um, shout outs to everybody who helped. That was like so crazy. We had one more day at the end on the other side. We went to, what's it called? Tornsburg? Uh, right. Pretty and, much. That's the American pronunciation of it. Yeah. Like, uh, I'm not going to like embarrass the entire people of Norway by like pretending like I know how to pronounce Norwegian words. <laughs> uh, it's an old Norwegian town. The oldest one. It had like a little castle overlooking it. It was really like cool. The museum was like a Viking museum. It was more like just like a Norway museum. It was like, yeah. 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 I mean, there was a lot of Viking stuff, yeah. but like it was definitely just like a Norway in general. Viking weapons, like so. Viking boats. There was like rebuilt Viking boats. Norway has a big like tradition of like whaling and they've really cut down on that lately, but like they still have like, there's like whale skeletons that were like really close up and very big and very like, I don't think you'd be able to do something like that in a museum in America. Right, yeah, you could you could like touch the bones, the yeah. bones. You could just, like, I could just them. imagine it being in America and somebody like sticking their disgusting gum on the on like underneath the sperm whale jaw. 
No. You know what I mean, though? Yeah. I just, ugh, I could just see it. Um, But yeah, that was really, really awesome. We went up onto a hill. We looked out. We went, like, at the base of the castle and looked out. That was really cool. Mm-hmm. We went to this, like, really cool Lebanese restaurant in town. Ooh, I'm going to sneeze. <coughs> no. No. Uh, Sorry, guys. Um, <laughs> we went to this Lebanese restaurant in town, and that was really nice. We, like, walked down to the water and saw, like, canals with, like, um, like a Viking boat. It was really beautiful. Yeah. Really good trip. And then uh, the last night, we, like, went out to dinner with uh, the br- the guy who ran the convention, Jan. We had great Italian food. It was a very funny dinner because we were sort of, like, confirming all the little, like, things we noticed. You know what I mean? Like, we were like, this guy seems like he's really, like, all business. And he's like, yeah, oh, that, yes, guy's, definitely yeah definitely. that guy's really serious, yeah. And we had a good laugh, and it was a good time, and uh, we're, I would I would love to go back next year. Oh yeah, it was it was it was the like the trip of a lifetime. I, I have to say, yeah, like seriously, like I I cannot be I cannot be more thankful that like our 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 show has been able to open that door for us to travel. To yeah, different places. We don't make much money on the show. You know, the show is not like a runaway success by any means uh, in terms of like financial gain for us or anything. But just the fact that we can like go do things like this and that we're going to London. Uh, in a, in a couple months yep. and we're going to Minneapolis and a bunch of other places. It's just like really cool. You know, it's like a really cool thing and it's worth, you know, to me, that's the stuff that makes it worth like all the long hours and all the, I'm, I'm so thankful for it. Yeah. It's really, it's really some cool stuff, but, but speaking of cool stuff, oh. let's jump into the news. Welcome to the news, darlings. put the s on the news i was gonna i was i was getting there the new i was getting there all you said is the new i'm getting there i'm get, i was getting to it now we can only choose one news article item that we have on our list and they can't know the rest of them okay how about this it's the new how about this oh you love gifts okay out of context ah now let's get right into it this is pokemon news <laughs> sorry guys i'm i'm now that i'm self-aware about the news bit it, it, it changed it changed me I know. I, <laughs> I didn't realize how weird it was. Like, I knew I that I did it. I'm not, like, delusional, but I, I didn't really realize how weird it was of a thing that I was doing. And now it just seems like I'm being weird for weirdness' sake, and I'm psyching myself out. Mm-hmm. It's hard to be a genius. Well, it's time to bring it back around, you know? You got to reclaim it. You're right. You're right. I need to... The new. I almost need to patch myself to change the way that I think about it, just like the Gen 7 patch... That was released that you need to make sure you download. How about ah, that? For a nice. freaking news segue right there. Very swag. Uh, very, because very you swag. cannot participate in online events without this patch. There's a new patch. It fixes a bug with the move Skydrop. I don't remember exactly what the bug was. It was like it wasn't really treating you like you were gone or something like that. Mm-hmm. I, f- I don't exactly remember. There was a bug with Scatterbug not being able to remember egg moves correctly, uh, which was a bummer. And then there was the classic exploit that everybody always does with Pokemon, which is to manipulate the clock. Uh, to get extra bonuses faster. In this case, that had to do with the Pokepelago. They've patched that out of the game. You dirty, dirty cheaters. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, you know, I'm. I know it's the more annoying viewpoint to take, but the like it's in the game approach to me makes the most sense. But now that it's not in the game, you're a dirty, dirty cheater if you try and do it. How does that sa- how, does that seem fair? Um, it's it seems silly, but I'll take it. Okay, great. <laughs> Uh, there are a lot of gifts for you to claim as well. Uh, we were, thought we were hot stuff going to Europe to get the, uh, Midnight Lycanroc event because it was the only place to get it at the time. And then it came out and we were like, well, well then. Yep. So you can go get your Midnight Lycanroc wherever you want at your local game store. It's a, uh, serial code. So just, uh, you know, go pick that up before June 5th it is. Yeah, it ends in about a week. Yeah. So make sure you grab it. I don't know about I don't know about in Europe. It might go for a little longer in Europe. Yeah. So just um, you know, heads up on that, be aware, and uh go out go out and get it right now if you need to. Yeah. The Lycan Rock has no guard, which is pretty cool, which means that you can't miss and it can't miss. It holds a life orb, it has Stone Edge, Sucker Punch, Fire Fang, and Swords Dance. So that's a pretty scary Stone Edge, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. That's pretty cool, actually. I mean, like I've never once considered like maybe I need to use a Lycan Rock. I love Lycanroc. Lycanroc's pretty cool. 
I if always, I was still uh, messing around with Smogon, I would be like all about like and rock and thing. I usually tend to like midday form a little bit more, but like the midnight form is also very, very cool. And I guess that uh, fighting type gets it, you know, some some good stuff, right? I don't know. It helps with some resistances it has, right? Yes. It, I mean, it, you know, it's it's more about like which one you want than which one is better. They, mm-hmm. they have, they just, they, you use them differently yeah. pretty much. Um, but yeah, get that like and rock. There's also, you can now pick up Mega Steelix, Mega Pidgeotite, Mega Heracronite, Herac- Heraconite. 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 Oh, man. Heraconite. So bad. And Mega Houndumite using the code Azul, which means blue. Blue. Uh, no. It's a A Z U L. Yeah, Azul. Yeah, I know. But you just said like Azul. Azul. Which is, you know, is fine. Azul. A Z U L. Azul. Yeah. All right. Uh, that means blue. No end date has been announced for this evening. This event, evening, Eve. No, that means that's supposed to say event. Yes, okay. It is. <laughs> no end date has been announced for this event yet. Pick it up right now. Dog. Woo. Uh, that's great. Mega stones. Yeah. I mean, are, are we still, are we excited about mega stones? Question of the day. Seriously, I'm, am I? I'm, I'm like trying to find enthusiasm for them. I'm like, yeah, now you can get these mega. Now, I was thinking there's about no that when reason I was like to use them at all. Compiling that today. I was I was thinking about like oh mega stones and there's like you know the the newest battle competition and the mega stones you get from that and I was just like I don't really I don't really care about them like you can't use them for any like there's not even like I you know how many people out there and I know this has to be some of you and this I know this is a reality check this is this is a Dex podcast reality check <laughs> there's a bunch of people out there I know because I'm this person a lot of the time where you're like yep someday I'm gonna be a competitor in VGC or like someday. I'm going to enter some sort of tournament or some sort of battle, or I'm going to battle someone somewhere. And when I do, this team that I'm breeding is going to win those battles for me. Right? And okay. like, regardless of how much you actually battle in real life, I know, I know that these people are out there that you just, you have your team and you have like a lot of different, you, you know, once you get the team done and you're not battling, you start working on like your other team or like some subs for your team and you just keep building out your team and building out your team. Because someday you're definitely going to battle somebody or do something, right? Like, and that I think is the majority of the people who play this game, right? Like, I think most of the people are like not really entering into the competitive scene, though some are, and I think everybody should try it. You know what I mean? It's not like that. I just think like realistically, most people who breed Pokemon aren't using them to battle regularly. Sure. But with a Megastone for me, right? Like there's not even like, a place that I can imagine myself using it. Like, there's not, like, I can't even pretend, like, one day I need to, like, breed up a good, like, EV spread for a for a Mega Pokemon because there's just no end game for that. Unless maybe there's going to be, like, an like maybe VGC 18, they'll add Mega, Mega Stones back in or something. I doubt it, but, like, maybe they will. And, like, that's the only thing I can imagine right now. So that's, I'm just like not excited about it because there's just no end goal. There's yeah, I like guess no they're, like, they're like fine to have. And then not only that, but like everybody else gets them later. Yeah, but like, I'm. So I don't know. It's just it's like, okay. I'm just trying to like, it's like getting like the plates. It's like you can't use them. They're not from this game. Like, It's interesting because I didn't expect Mega Stones to go in that direction. Yeah, I, expect, when, I guess you know when uh, you can go back to our old podcast when we first, when we first started hearing about megas and stuff, and we were just like, "This is the new thing in Pokemon," and it just kind of like went away. Well, you know what? You know what it could mean, and this is kind of interesting, is that like, what if it's just like a situation where they're like, "Yo, like this year, it's going to be like about this. This is how the meta is going to work. Is we're going to use these like these Pokemon to like manipulate the environment, and then you know you come in and you use the like." changed properties of the environment to like battle against the opponent and like create strategies you know what i mean sure. that's basically what gen 7 is pretty much and there's like a couple other things that are in play and then maybe gen 8 it's like oh it's going to be all about like maybe you have to charge your mega stones this time or something like that and like they bring that in and now we have the mega stones back and then you but you have to charge them or something like that like maybe there's like some different mechanic that they're having in mind later that's going to be like ah i'm glad i have all these mega stones <laughs> But for now, I'm just like, I don't know. Um, you can also get your level ball, your level, ugh, your level ball and your rare candy from the latest global mission by signing on to the Pokemon Global Link. Uh, so that's cool. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what you had to do to get that. Those are the beans, the 30 beans. Oh, you just had to do it once, probably. 
Yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, more gifts. Uh, it's time for the Sinnoh Cap Pikachu to be distributed in Japan. That one is live until the 29th, but as always with these, there's a second chance. So just recap again if you're in Japan and you want to send me all of these. <laughs> wink, wink. Uh, there are different times when each hat Pikachu is available, and you can only get one of them. So you have to, like, choose which one you get, basically. Does that make sense? Right. And if you miss it, like, if you're, like, if you listen to this podcast and you didn't know about it and you're, like, what? Oh, it's the 30th. The 29th was yesterday. There is one other time when you can look it up. So don't fret. Just go look it up on Serebii or look it up on whatever probably more informative Japanese official Pokemon website there is. <laughs> uh, and figure it out. Um, what do we think about the Sinnoh Cap Pikachu? Um, Sinnoh Cap, uh, sure, fine. Like, I don't, I barely remember what Isn't it looks that, like. I feel the same way. Does that suck? No, it doesn't suck. It's just like the part of the anime that like neither of us were into. So like, why would we remember it? You know? Yeah. I um, like Sinnoh though. Like I like the region. Sure. Sure. I don't know. Um, but that does remind me that in, uh, there was this GameStop in Santa Fiore that we went to that, uh, I got a, first of all, I got, uh, Europe has some like cool apparel in the GameStops. GameStops in the US, no offense to anyone who works there, but like the t-shirts <laughs> and stuff and they, they're just not as good. Right. They're just, but the ones in Europe looked really cool, and so I got this Team Rocket backpack that I was super excited about. But um, in the store, there were there was uh, some there were there were uh, Hoenn Cap Pikachu plushies. Yeah. And uh, so yeah, I I, I think that um, I think that was really cool. And that was pretty cute, and uh, I'd like to see that backpack is super tight, you guys. Yeah, I know my backpack is so cool. It's got some like fake leather on it. It's got like some like segmented stuff. It looks very like it's, a good backpack. it's like a mod Team Rocket backpack. It's tight. Yeah. I was like, yes, this is the backpack for me. Um, but yeah, that's the Sinnoh Cat Pikachu. Grab it for me and send it to me. <laughs> I want it. You don't have to do that. Uh, for Pokken players, a qualifier event for the Pokken World Championships will take place at DreamHack in Sweden this year. I believe something similar happened last year. Is that right? Yeah. I think so. Uh, it's going to be live streamed, which is cool. And the top four players from that tournament in Sweden are going to get an invite to the Anaheim World Championships, which are in August. Yay. DreamHack takes place from June 17th to 20th. I don't know how registration works for that, um, but I think you could probably figure it out if you Google it. Right. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's pretty cool, right? I would love to hear from somebody who's still playing Pokken to be like, yo, what's the scene about? Like, what's it, what's it like these days? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I just... I guess I just really want Pokemon to come to the Switch. Um, I think the game is so damn cool, and I love watching it, but, you know... I have to like pay attention to everything that's happening with Pokemon at any given time. And it's hard for me to focus on that because it's, you know, there's not much going on that often. Yeah. I can't get like super deep into it, but I love watching people play it. It's really cool. Yeah. It's a really deep game. Seems like, um, but yeah, let's get that out on the switch. You know what I'm saying? Agreed. Agreed. Would you buy us? Was that, would that sell the switch for you? Me? You keep asking me that. Uh, I don't need a switch right now. Yeah, I'm just interested. I'm just interested because I'm trying to think about like all, all these people who are like, I don't want to switch yet, or like all these people who are like, I don't have a switch, but I'm like, I was, I would have got one, but I can't get one, and so now I'm just like, maybe I should not get one yet, and I'm just wondering like, what's gonna be the thing? Like, I, I'm I don't know. I mean, like, it's it's different for me because like you and I live in the same house, and you have a switch, and so like, if I really want to play Switch, I can just like play it while you're not here. Right. But like, if there's some, as soon as there's a game that we both really want that requires us to have two switches so that we can both play it, that's when I'll get a switch. But like, or, you know, if like a pink and purple one comes out, like I'm cool with that. I like, or like a really cool variant one, then I'll get it. But well, like, I just think a barrier for then, the, I'm just like not in. Right. Well, I mean, I just, I think a barrier for the switch right now that will like make its sales go much higher up even is that like you and I would not think twice like, oh, like the new DS is out. Oh, we each need to get one. Right. Like right away. You know right. what I mean? But yeah, the Switch this, doesn't have that um, that necessity yet. It doesn't. It doesn't, it doesn't just be. I think it's just because of the games. Right. But like, you know, if the Switch came out and like Pokemon Stars came out, no doubt you would have bought one. You're like, I need my own one. Right. Yeah. It's just weird. It's just a weird thing that it's like still selling, and it's like, I don't know. I don't know. I feel like not People every single. People love them. What? People love them. Yeah. Shout outs to those sirens going on outside. And you know what? They're fun. They're they're super fun. Gerard brought his uh, switch to uh, to Norway and we like sat in his room and played Mario Kart for a little while. Um, or at least Alex did. I, I like got really tired and went to, <laughs> to bed for like three hours in the middle of the day. <laughs> <laughs> uh we've we've been playing Bomberman. Yeah, yeah, Bomberman's fun. 
Yeah. Uh, I, I, I believe in the switch. I just, I'm it's just, good. It's it's cool. It's yeah. awesome. But I just don't feel yet that I need my own. Yeah, I don't. I'm not trying to antagonize I'm like looking, you. By... I'm like looking at it right now. If there's one in my house, and I just like don't feel like we need. To yeah, have yeah, to. yeah. I'm not. I'm not trying to antagonize you by like roasting you about not having a switch. I just, I'm interested to see where people's thoughts are about it. Does that make sense? Like, yeah. I'm interested to see like when you're gonna tip. Like, I wonder if it's gonna be a surprise thing. Like, maybe you start playing Arms, and you're like, oh no, <laughs> I need my own switch, or like you know. Splatoon 2 or something like that where you're just like I would just love to see what how where your where your brain is. Sure. Um but yeah. That's Pokémon. I would love to have Pokémon on the Switch. Um also as we speak, the Pokémon International Challenge May is running its battles ending on May 28th. If you registered and participate, you will receive the Tyranitar Ty Ty Tyranitarite, ugh, <laughs> Abomasite and Manectite stones plus championship points if you're the best like no one ever was. I wanted to do this, but I was in Norway and you know, unfortunately, I was not able to participate Register. in this. But like, you know, I'll grab, I'll, I'll hop on the next one. But I just, uh, yeah, battles are going on with, like right now. If you're listening to this on the day it comes out, yeah, I'm sure so there's like people also. I'm sure there's also people streaming uh, themselves doing these battles. So oh, if sure. you're really interested, go check it out or check out the Dex Discord, which you can get to through this video on our channel. Or if you're not listening to it on the channel, just go to the channel. And it's in every video description. You can just mm -hmm. go to the Discord. And there's always people in there. We have a streaming thing, and people are always posting themselves streaming. Um, so go hop hop in there and check something out. Yeah. Pretty cool stuff. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, Tyranitarite, Abomasite, and Manectite are the rewards for that, and it ends on May 28th. Um, shout outs to anybody who's actually putting in the time, because that's really cool. Uh, and finally... And this is the weird news of the week. Like, a squirrel on a jet ski! <laughs> I, I feel like. Uh, literally right now as we're recording this, just a couple hours ago, the mobile game Magikarp Jump was globally released after it weirdly came out a couple days ago in just Japan and Italy, <laughs> which is, I think, a weird spread of countries. No, like, roasties to Italy, just, like, just a weird... It's like, why Italy? Yeah. I wonder what it was about Italy that made it the right market for it. Um, our resident mobile game trier, Kelly, played a bit of it and has the... That's me. Pokekel scoop. Scoop, scoop, Pokekel scoop. I'm gonna scoop you in the scoop. I missed that one. What? I missed that stinger. You missed it? I missed it. Like you, you're glad to have it back. I'm glad to see it back. Um, so Magic Herb Jump is a uh, funny. It's um, it's, it's uh, it's first of all, it's super, it's super easy. There's not really much to it, like skill based, as far as I'm concerned. Um, but granted, I've only done like one Magic Herb so, so what? Far. So what? It, like so essentially you're like this kid and um you like come to this town and there's this guy named uh Mayor Carp and he teaches you how to fish for a magic carp. Is he a man? Uh yeah, he's a man. But his name is Mayor Carp. His name is Mayor Carp. With a K? K A R P. Just the last half of the word magic carp. Mayor Carp. Yep. Great. He looks great. Look at him. Dude, I would show him. He's wearing a Hawaiian him. shirt. He's got sunglasses and a hat on. He's got a beard that obscures his face. Who does that sound like? Um, no one, I think. Uh, a lot like Alex. Um, but anyway, and uh, and he's wearing shorts too. So, you know. Uh, but anyway, he teaches you how to fish for a magic harp. You catch a magic harp, and then you like. It's kind of like a you know you remember when I was like obsessed with Mola Mola. Yeah. It's kind of like that in a way. Like you you have your magic harp in a pond, and you have to like click on food to like feed it. And, um, but then as your Magikarp grows, uh, you have to take it into tournaments where it has jumping contests with other Magikarps. And, um, <clears throat> the goal is to just, you know, beat the leagues, the Magikarp jumping leagues. And so you do that. You can like train your Magikarp. Is it like, like Speed Racer, better. but with Magikarps? Uh, I don't, I don't. Like I they're didn't... like, you're never going to take my Magikarp down. And there's like dirty politics going on no, behind no, the scenes. No, it's not like that. Um, the art style is very, very cute. That's very like thick lined and uh, like it's a darling. I love the, the art style in there. But um, but yeah, it's just kind of like a fun little game. It's not hard at all. It's just kind of like whatever. But as soon as your magic harp gets uh, a loss, uh, it's retired and you have to start over with another magic harp. And so it's all about you trying to train up your magic harp to be the best it can be. And, you know, the more things you unlock, the higher level Magikarps you can start out with. Honestly, so, this uh, sounds fun to me. It's kind of fun. It's kind of cute. I've only done one Magikarp so far. I just lost my first match and retired him. And we walked off into the sunset together. Um, but Are uh, you, like, slowly getting addicted to this? What do you mean? I've, I've played, like, 30 minutes of it. How I know, can I be addicted to this? Just earlier, your opinion was like, eh. I mean, like, still right now, I mean, it's cute and it's charming. But, like, it's like, it's like okay. 
like honestly I still like Pokemon Duel better than I like this so far but like I haven't played enough of it to to form an opinion on whether or not I'm going to be addicted to it just yet so check in with me next week yeah I can't wait to find out where this leads yeah and you can like decorate your, decorate your little pond and stuff and there's like Pokemon that'll come by and like cheer for your Magikarp and stuff it's it's, it's cute it's it's got some cute stuff great going on look I'm no nobody wants more good Pokemon games than me like fun things even if they're dumb fun things I'm like pretty down for that when it comes to Pokemon you know what I mean sure so I'm I hope it's good I might even download it myself mm. uh oh that's a car alarm isn't it yep that's a car alarm I mean, it's not our car alarm no but it sure is going off there, there it, it is. is oh Ooh. gosh thank God all right <laughs> but that's it for the news let's jump into the Fancers segment. Fancers, da 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 da. Fancers, da 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 da. Great. Great. This is the Fancers segment. This is the fan mail segment. Every week, people write in with stuff that's relevant to our discussions. Their ideas for Alolan forms or Mega Stone forms or whatever. Mm-hmm. Just general scuttlebutt among the Dex podcast community comes in. And what email address does it come into but thedexcast at gmail.com. Again, that's T-H-E-D-E-X-C-A-S-T at gmail.com. That's where you send your fan mail. Send it in. We may read it here on this very segment like we are with a couple people right now. How does that? How did that? How was that? Uh, that sound, sounded fine to me. It sounded a little bit weird. Crazy even. but fine. Crazy even. Crazy even, but uh, fine. Come on. I'm all right. All right. <laughs> All right, this first one comes from um, Johnny. Is Pokemon now synchronized? S- theory slash question. Okay. Mm-hmm. Is Pokemon now synchronized? Hi, Alex, PokeKels, maybe Jimmy, definitely Wallace, Hilda, and guests. Love you all. I am Johnny from Costa Rica. This is my second time writing, but my first time been read. I hope. Sticking your tongue out emoji. In all seriousness, no. Whoa. In all seriousness, though, have you guys noticed that the entire Poke world out of nowhere suddenly synced? First, Pokemon Duel came up with Rock Gym Cup. Then Pokemon Go continued with the Adventure Week in which Rock-type Pokemon spawn more frequently. And on top of it all, there's a Lycanroc event in Sun and Moon. Do you guys think this is a sign for the future of the franchise as a whole or just a bunch of coincidences? Lots of love from San Jose, San Jose, Costa Rica. Hashtag time. Hashtag, hashtag time. Hashtag sorry for my obviously long email. Was not long. Hashtag sorry for my bad grammar. Hashtag I don't really know what to type here. Hashtag is Kells the real Kells? Hashtag no, that's just a game. That's just a theory, a game. Okay, bye. Winky emoji. <laughs> what do you think? I got distracted by all of the hashtags. What Can we go back to the... The, the Rock Cup in Pokemon okay. Duel. Adventure Week with Rock in Pokemon Go. And Lycanroc and Sun and Moon, is it a conspiracy? What do we think? No, it's not a conspiracy. It's totally intentional and totally planned by the Pokemon company. Absolutely 100%. No, I'm so it totally is a conspiracy. Confident. It's not a conspiracy. It's just, it's not even secret. It's they conspired together to make it rock. I, I mean, when you say conspiracy, that, that implies some like... Nefarious some purpose? Absolutely nefarious, not. Pokemon, like, never. Like, like behind closed doors kind of thing. But like <laughs> now... Uh, no, now, I, I was actually, when I was compiling the news uh, with the Lycanroc event, like, on the front page, it was like, it's Magikarp week, and it's the week that Magikarp Jump comes out, and, like, I'm sure there'll be other Magikarp stuff that, like, happens, and I, I think that it's all plans, and I think it's just, like, all to kind of create, like, a little a little sense that all, all the parts of Pokemon are tied together in some way, you know? I feel you. Um, great. I mean, I feel like that's got to be the way, I, I mean, I feel like that's the truth. I feel like that's really what's happening. Right? Yeah, yeah. It's got to be. Um, but yeah, I think it is. And I would be interested to see if it's happened before. I'm, I haven't really been paying attention to that. And I wonder if there's more situations like this. Yeah. If you want to like get all crazy with your like red yarn and like, uh, like a pegboard <laughs> and you want to like send us like an email of all the stuff, the crazy conspiracies you figured out between all the different uh, Pokemon games doing promotions, I would love to hear about that. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, that sounds interesting. Uh, but thank you, Johnny, for that email. This next one comes from Lulzigi. Ready? Yes. How does one Discord slash balance? Hey, Alex, Jimmy, and Kells. Maybe a, also a guest if I'm lucky. Longtime listener, first time writer. I have a few questions for you all. First off, how would you feel about Pokemon adding balance patches to the games to make overpowered moms a little weaker and weaker ones a bit stronger? 
I've been wanting to ask this question since mid to late 6th gen because of the rampant overpoweredness of Mega Kangaskhan. Balancing is certainly not a problem right now in Gen 7, or at least I don't think it is, but I've always wondered what it would be like, and more interestingly, how they would justify it in lore. Like, maybe there's a mythical Pokemon that occasionally messes with the space-time continuum, which somehow changes the base stats of certain species of Mons or something. I don't know, you got any better ideas of how it could be explained in story? Also, I hear you guys talking about your Discord server sometimes, and well, I've used Discord before, but I don't really understand how one would use your Discord. Like, I know how to use Discord, kinda, not really, but I would like to understand the purpose of a Discord server as opposed to a traditional forum. No, but seriously, I don't understand Discord. Is it just like a forum or what, at least for the purposes of the Dex community? Because I love theorizing about lore. From Lil ZG. Now for the hashtags. Hashtag first time writer. Hashtag sorry for the long email. Hashtag I'm on my laptop and it looks giant. It's not. Hashtag it probably looks like that because of Gmail. It's not large. Hashtag but I really hope it's not. Don't worry. It's not. Hashtag balance patches. Hashtag Mega Kangaskhan was totally broken. Hashtag how would you. Hashtag but how could you. Hashtag join the Dex Discord server. Hashtag I think. Hashtag later man. Well, you're in luck because I'll tell you exactly how the Dex Discord works. Okay. It is like a forum. It's basically like a like a, a, a like a chat area um, where you can go on and it, talk to other people. I would describe people. it most closely to Skype, but it's like a Skype with like a little bit more of a intention to use it with a large group of people. Yeah. Yeah, so um yeah, so there's a lot of people down on the Discord. They uh and and there's like uh, little subcategories in the in the in the Discord itself. Uh, you can go to the, the clubhouse, which is just like the general chat area. You can go to the Research Institute where you can posit theories and talk about theories with other people, where you can compile research and all that jazz, which is super fun. There's the battle area, like the union room where you can go in and like find people to battle against. And uh, so yeah, basically our, our, our um, thesis behind it is that it's just kind of like a community where you can chill with other people that like Pokemon as much as you do and uh, you know just pop in to talk about it. It's so much better at being that than I ever thought it would be. Yeah, yeah. I pop on there as, you know, as much as I can. I, I, I go in there whenever, you know, try to do that once every couple days at least. Just to kind of like say, hey, see who's around. Like, what, what are we all talking about? Yeah. Like that kind of stuff. It's super fun. Um, so, so yeah, I encourage people to, to try it out if they're interested in something along that along that along those lines. Yeah. And as for your other thing about patching, I think that they are not patching because they're not viewing their metagame as like a living, breathing thing so much. Does that make sense? Sure. Like, I, I, I think the reason they're not doing it is just because like they, they are like, all right, these are the rules for the season. This is what they're going to be. If it gets out of balance, next season will be different. Yada, yada, yada. You know what I mean? I think it's they're making it their business to like make it not unbalanced when they put out those rules. But as as we all know, that doesn't necessarily happen all the time. And I think they've been, though I do think they've been getting a lot better at that part mm -hmm. of it. Um, am I against it? Absolutely not. I think that would be a really cool thing for them to do. Um, but I think that we'll probably see it maybe on the switch or something where maybe the infrastructure is a little bit more complex, you know, where like a season two could be downloaded to the same game kind sure. of situation more like, you know, the, like they do with things like call of duty or for honor or whatever Titanfall kind of stuff, destiny where they just like add stuff. I, you know, I could see that happening in Pokemon later down the line now that the Switch is, like, the the, the, the standard. Right. Um, I just don't think we're quite there yet. What about in-story? I like the idea of a legendary. Or I like the idea of, like, a virus, like, affecting all the Pokemon and, it, and being like, we don't know what caused it. Or something like that. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know. I would love just a little bit more um, info as to the nature of Pokemon. If they do give us lore on that. If they did that. Does that make sense? Yep. Cool. Thank you for that email. LulzyG. That's a that's a neat username. Uh, okay, we got time for a couple more, right? Yeah. Let's hop in. This one is from Teacher Damien, and it's called Teaching a Sixth Grader with the Decks. Spoilers, I do know a little bit about this already going into this, but I think it's great, so I'm reading it anyway. Hi there, DexCast. Teacher Damien here. I haven't emailed since the release of Oros. Since then, I have been substitute teaching and am currently a long-term sub as an, as an ESL, English as a Second Language teacher, at an elementary school. The reason I'm writing you is because the Dex really helped me make a major breakthrough with a student. One of my sixth graders was very shy and soft-spoken, which isn't uncommon for students learning English. I had noticed that she had a lot of drawings of video game characters on her folder, and one day in particular, I noticed she had Litten drawn on her hand in pen. Aww. This sparked an idea that I thought would help her open up and speak more. I started by giving her an article about Maneki Neko to read. I then played her 
your Meowth episode. She was extremely excited, and it was obvious that no teacher had ever tried tied her interest into learning like this. I went on to assign her a research project based around Victory Bell and its connection to the pitcher plant. The link to the PowerPoint she made is below. It isn't included in the presentation, but she was visibly proud when she broke down Victory Bell's name into Victory, Tree, and Bell like you guys do on the show. <laughs> I just wanted to pass this on to you guys as appreciation. It would mean a lot to her if you responded, but I know you get a ton of emails. I just want you to know that the learning you guys provide extends way past YouTube videos to classrooms and real life. As excited as I am that your show helped my student improve her reading and writing, I am even more excited that you helped her gain the confidence to come out of her shell. She's one of my most talkative students now, and all I can say is, thanks, DexCast. Best, Teacher Damien. And the, and the uh, PowerPoint is uh, attached. That is awesome. So tight. Okay, so first of all, I love this kind of stuff. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't think it was like my original intention, but it, it's kind of like been my secret goal now to like have people use the show as a resource in other areas and other ways. And to hear that, um, to hear that it helped to, you know, to help a student come out of her shell, like that is so, so awesome. And I strongly, strongly encourage people to like go and like look and find and try to like see where the connections are between games and real life, because like, it's, it's so true. Um, that makes me super, super happy and super, super proud of her. And I hope that, um, I hope that she continues to expand that Pokemon love with love of science and the real world applications, because I mean, it's neat. I, I, Pokemon above all other, you know, all, all other games, at least, you know, as far as I know, it, it has so much, so much put into every single one of it. One of, one of the Pokemon that are in the, the game. I don't know. I'm rambling, but, um, but yeah, and that makes me super happy. Thank you, Teacher Damien. I like, I, I can't. I'm really gonna, cool stuff. Yeah, and the PowerPoint, like, darling. Just chuffed to bits over here. <laughs> really cool stuff. Very, very honored to be a part of something like that. Yeah. That's how I feel. Damn. Yeah. Thank the you. feels. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, thank you for that email as well. Uh, but this next one is from Kenny. Sorry for the long email is the name of this email. Kenny, I'm going to tell you right now. This is on the lengthier side of emails that are totally not long. Uh, and to prove it, I'm going to read it to you. Hey there, DexCast, Pupboy Wallace, and maybe Jimmy. Long time listener and first time writer. Kenny, no fancy YouTubish name here. I just wanted to weigh in on a few topics that were covered recently. Those being the event Pokemon distributions and Pokemon on the Switch. I think that since we're a global community of trainers now more than ever, that a special event Pokemon should be available to everyone equally. They could even use the QR code function like Magearna. I agree with Alex too about having to go on some sort of mission or mini quest to get the special distributions. Maybe the postman just tells you that rare Pokemon has been sighted in an area and you could go find it like uh, the Necrozma encounter. Just picking them up from the postman in Pokemon Center seems a little lackluster to me. Secondly, I would love to see a beefier version of the Pokemon games with better graphics, animation, dead face protagonist, anyone, and voice acting. Mm -hmm. I would also like to have the next set of games, if they are on the Switch, to be able to communicate with the DS, but I think that would only happen if the next games are still within Gen 7. I had also had a thought of for the direction of a new game. What if instead of moving forward in the timeline or staying in roughly the same period, one of the new games went back in time to a feudal Japan-like era? To me, it would be really interesting to have a game where technology isn't as advanced and see where that would take the plot and how the lore could be built up during our playthrough. We could even become part of the legends we hear about in the other games. That's all I really had for now. P.S. I'm binging the Beer Bros playthroughs right now and loving them. I finished the Metroid ones and then chained a few shiny Paris because I wanted a shiny one with damp so I could change for Geodudes and named one Samus. Mushrooms equal Samus's giant shoulders. Hashtag hope as always. Hashtag Alex gets bodied in Dark Souls. Hashtag patience pimp. Hashtag Brett is hilarious. Hashtag perfect dicks. Hashtag you punt aisle episode 29 anyway up until episode oh perfect dicks hashtag up until episode 29 anyway hashtag alex is a cool dude hashtag kelly is a rose between two thorns hashtag thanks for the edits jimmy hashtag lovey all hashtag yuv, yuv, love y'all hashtag later man that was the hardest hashtag <laughs> series i've ever read in my life a rose between two thorns thank you <laughs> uh i love all of this i'm like, I feel like it's so easy to get event Pokemon, like, around the world at this point. Like, if we can, like, all have the game on the same day, I feel like putting out, a like, a file onto the internet on the same time is, like, not too hard for Pokemon to swing yeah, with Nintendo. Yeah. Doesn't that make sense? Yeah, yeah, it makes sense to me. Um, Even if it was QR codes, honestly, like, if they just tweeted it out on every Twitter and they were like, here you go, I would be, like, so down with that. Um, And as for the feudal Japan era idea, what do we think? Um, give me the basics again because 
I, I find myself getting distracted by hashtags a lot, actually. Um, what if the new Pokemon game took place in feudal Japan, like version of, of the Pokemon world? It would be interesting. Would you be excited if you became part of a legend or a piece of lore from the other games? Like, would you be excited if you... Yeah, like, definitely, definitely. Like, definitely. If, if the beginning of the game started and, like, the tower burned down? And yeah, like, that would be that would be tight. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Like, like I like I guess I guess I would want to like kind of like workshop it and like figure it out a little bit more because I think it, I think it yeah does, it does worry me a little bit um to be like but back in time but Pokemon just got just we're we're heading towards the future um but I mean I guess like that wouldn't really make any difference because that doesn't necessarily mean mechanics would go back in time. So what if it like, was like Assassin's Creed? That would be wild, dude. Like, like being you, able to go forward and backwards. Yeah, <laughs> that would be so so strange. Like if you like. Every time you went to sleep, you like dreamed you were in feudal Japan or something like that, and your Pokemon came with you. That would be so strange, but neat. Um, my knee-jerk reaction is to be like, yes, like you know what I mean, like yes, I want this, but yeah, mm -hmm. at the same time, like it it really does activate some like alarm bells in my head of like, is this too far? Is this too big of a step for Pokemon? But then I realize I'm just being a wuss. Like I should be open to whatever. Like if if the game came out and it was awesome, like the idea of a feudal Japan type Pokemon game is like very cool in my brain, mm -hmm. assuming that I was like happy with it. And if it, and if they were able to do something like that, I would be like, wow, like, wow, like what a cool direction for the game to take. What a way to like open it up so much. Right. Yeah. Like, you know what? At this point, honestly, I trust the Pokemon company. And like, if that was the direction that they were going to take it, I probably would be like, you know what? I bet this is going to be awesome. Yeah, so, let's exactly. See. Um, all right, let's let's uh, let's do one more and then we'll be out of here. Cool. How does that sound? Strikes me well. This is from Charlie. It's called Variance. Dear Alex, Kells, and Jimmy, recently I've been thinking about a certain possibility I would be 100% for in the potential Gen 4 remakes. It's regional Sinoian Variance. Woo. My thought is, since every Pokemon, Bar, Starter, and Legendaries are available between Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum, a remake of Platinum would be awesome, by the way. These would have to be exclusively from the post-Gen 4 games, which is completely doable. Here are a couple of ideas I have come up with. Sinoian Trevenant, now Fire Grass, whose design concept would incorporate the amazing concept of pyrophytic flowering and include the aspect of the endangered fire lily plant that prolifically flowers from wildfires. Whoa. As well as incorporating the appearance of the Swedish fire log into its design. It would have the ability Flash Fire, which is perfect, and would power up the physical fire type moves it would now get, like Flare Blitz and Flame Charge, or maybe even have the new ability Chili, enabling it to burn fire types like Corrosion for poison and cause them neutral damage, like Corrosion should for steel types, in my opinion. I love this idea because it bounces straight off every ghost's ability uh, to cause burns with the Will-O-Wisp and possibly gives a reason for Trevenant's existence as a dead tree in other regions. Another variant I thought about was about Sinoan Tranquil, with its coloration and design changed to make it look like the Malaysian Fireback Pheasant. You may be thinking fire flying, but Talonflame exists, and I know Mandibuzz and Honchkro do too, but bear with me, but I want it to be dark flying. It would retain super luck, and like Honchkro, it could use it with Night Slash and maybe even Scope Lens for a 50 to 100% critical chance, or it could have another original ability in Death Spurrer. Fighting type moves have their accuracy reduced by half. So no one tranquil would pass burns around with Will-O-Wisp and set up Tailwind while taunting and just generally being a nuisance. I'm not going to lie, I haven't thought about it greatly competitively, I just love the look of that pheasant. Of course, the whole Tranquil line would have a variant as well. Anyway, that's all from me. I hope you're well. I can't wait to see what you think about my ideas. And as always, keep it real. Your fan, Charlie. Hashtag sorry for the long email. Charlie, it wasn't a long email. And I'm looking at these uh, things right now. This pheasant, which is like a very black color pheasant with like dark red feathers on its tail that blossom into sort of like straw colored yellow feathers on the tail at tips with like a red sort of fleshy mask on his face that makes it look like it's like a like a bandit or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's neat. Really cool. And then he also sends a picture of a Swedish fire log, which is a thing that they do where they burn a log by cutting deep cuts into it on all sides and letting it burn itself from the inside out. Whoa. You should look up a picture of it. It's really cool stuff. That is cool. Um, I think those are both great ideas, number one. I love variants. I yeah. love the ideas of variants. I think they're a little bit less indulgent, self-indulgent than the Megas are. I, I agree with you, yeah, because Megas are a little bit, like, you know, by nature over-designed. Well, also, the thing that bummed me out about the Megas was that, like, they don't really have, like, the way that we do the decks where we, like, find a cool detail and, like, are like, oh, this is, like, why this design does this. Uh-huh. Doesn't really ring true with a lot of the Megas. Right. Which is, like, a yeah, weird... Yeah, like, Garchomp versus Mega Garchomp. Mega Garchomp is just, like, more. more. 
Yeah. I mean, I'm, I don't know, you know, to be fair, like maybe I'm, I'm definitely willing to be proven wrong on that, but like, that's what it kind of seems like. Right. Yeah. But the Alolan ones, like they all are like very, very like well designed from like bottom to top. Yeah, and, I agree. And for, for me, I, I'm, I'm so much more excited about them and I love how well thought out these are design wise. Um, but yeah, I'm, I am hoping for Sinoan, Sinoan forms. Actually, I think that would be really funny. I think that'd be like a really cool thing for them to do. And I would love to see them do it with other, like, I would love to see like the more simple Kanto forms of some Pokemon or something like that. Right. Which, you know, almost like started as a meme, but to see it in the game would be really cool too. Um, but yeah, I love all that. I'm really excited to hear more about the Gen 4 remakes. E3 is in a couple days. We got like a couple or a couple weeks. You think we're going to get some Pokemon announcements? Mm, typically we don't. Yeah. You know, um, though I believe that we heard about Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire during E3. Am I crazy? Uh, I don't think we heard about it, but there was like that. I don't know. I, I feel like we don't get a lot of E3 Pokemon stuff. I feel like yeah, they, it's like they Grand like Theft Auto. They just never show up. Yeah. <laughs> but like what I, don't I love have high hopes, but if they do come, I will gladly see what I will, they have to offer. I will offer. definitely watch that trailer <laughs> and talk about it on next week's podcast. Exactly. Uh, not Wait. like not literally next week's podcast. Yeah, I was gonna say when is E three? It's in two or three weeks. Ah, three weeks. Pretty soon. Yeah, get hype. I'm like just ready to see like the future of the Switch. Sure. I will hope that it's not just like Mario Odyssey. I hope there's like three games more that are like big games. That, mm -hmm. That's what I would like from the Switch, and also the Dark Souls trilogy. Ah. Uh. That would be a dream come true, but that's not gonna happen. Um. Okay. So I think that's it for today. Uh, guys, thank you so much for listening to the Dex podcast. Uh, sorry we didn't have one last week, but obviously we were in Norway. And I was going to bring my laptop, but I got scared of the laptop ban, actually. So I, I didn't bring my laptop. which is Yeah, so that would really suck if you were able to take your laptop there, but then, like, not back. I, I mean, I would have to check it, and I, you know, I just wouldn't be cool with it. So I, I was like, no, uh, we'll just do it next week. Um, but I hope you guys are interested about Norway. We're probably going to put up some sort of video version of something, I don't know, something, something. <laughs> where we'll talk about it a little bit more. Um, but uh, it was a really fun time. Thank you to Retro Spill Messin, and thank you to you guys for being patient and for listening to this podcast at all. Please tell your friends about us. And if you want to write in, again, send your emails to thedexcast at gmail.com. That's T-H-E-D-E-X-C-A-S-T at gmail.com. I'm Alex. And I'm Pokekel. And we'll see you next time, guys. Bye. Bye.
Later, man.